Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Historical Horses. How are you all doing? I've got, I was just going to say, I've got a really interesting topic today, but actually, I find all the topics I put on this channel really interesting, otherwise, I wouldn't do them. So, if you are 30 plus, rode as a child, yeah, I'd say 30 plus and you rode as a child, you will probably remember going to a tack shop and there being a corner or a shelf in the tack shop that should be just full of horse show schedules for your area. And I can remember, because mine was the old dairy sat where I used to go there loads. And there used to be like a kind of a long running kind of shelf area. And honestly, the amount of schedules on it, I reckon I could pick up at least 10 or 12 schedules every time I went. Um, I don't never look first. I just scoop them all up um, and take them back with me because um, I knew that that afternoon when I got home, I was going to sit down and I'd go through every schedule, work out which was the best show to go with my ponies. And then you'd circle the classes you wanted to do. Then you'd mention it to a parent and they say, you're not doing all those classes because it costs too much. And you know, that's not fair on the pony. So you'd have to go back to it again and then decide like, you know, what classes is my pony going to do best in? Uh, mine would normally be like a working hunter. Uh, if they had dressage, I'd always do a dressage class. Um, what other classes? I love a veteran or a family pony, something like that. Not such a fan of a show jumping class, to be honest, but I did do them. But you used to love it. There's nothing better than having a whole stack of schedules to go through. And I swear that throughout the summer holidays, I could have gone to a local horse show every weekend of the school holidays. Like, there was just so many available. In fact, I was thinking about it while I was hacking now. Just not big rolls here. I reckon there was at least eight or 10 horse shows within a 20 minute radius of where I lived as a child. Like, there was just like, there was nearly a show in every village. There was just tons. And now, yes, there's still plenty of horse shows out there. You know, obviously horse shows, horse trials. There's plenty, there's lots of equestrian venues now that hold many a show throughout the year. But there's definitely a lack of just the good old fashioned horse show. You still get the agricultural shows and things like that, but I just know in my area, so many have ended. There's probably only three, four now. Whereas like I say, there used to be eight, nine, 10 that I could count um, that were super local to me and they're just not around anymore, which is a real shame. Um, and so I wanted to talk about the lost horse shows, but specifically of London. Because obviously there were some incredible big shows in London, if you go back, <laughs> go back in time a little bit. And I just wanted to mention a few of the wonderful, amazing, huge spectator shows that sadly are now lost to the past. I should add, I'm really grateful because I put a post up on, I think it's something called like the golden days of show jumping. It's a Facebook page. And honestly, I didn't know there were so many horse shows or were once so many horse shows in London. Like couldn't believe it I, I already knew a few like Richmond and um the Greater London show and so there's already a few that I knew about but my goodness I was not expecting the quantity that people told me about like it would seem that every borough of London had a horse show sadly not anymore I'm afraid we've had to come inside the weather is I was going to say unpredictable at the moment but actually quite predictable because all it does is rain <laughs> no good for vlogging outside and I'm trying to do this quickly in between then going and riding mine I've just given them some lunch and I'm like right well they eat that I can go and start this but actually these history vlogs are really hard to do because there's so much information to remember which is also why sometimes it's slightly easier to be done inside because I can have my notes so I'm really sorry if I do glance down um, I try and cut it so that you don't see me looking down at my notes too much but I can't remember all these dates and measurements and events that took place. It's just too many. Um, also, I apologise about the light in my house. It's really low, but I thought of a bonus on this front. Nobody needs to see my face too clearly <laughs> on the big screen. So I'm thinking low light may be preferable. Um, I'm thinking maybe a selfie light at some point, but for now, I think this will be fine. And hopefully I should have enough pictures to kind of cover over my face every now and then. So I actually found this really hard to research. I, I thought there'd be loads of information online about all the London horse shows that used to be around. But turns out, no, not at all. After having this huge list given to me, off I went onto Google researching it all and only 
maybe three or four of them came up with a bit of information about them. So the rest of them truly are lost to the past. I'll give them all honourable mention later. We are going to start with what is the oldest venue on my list, and that is the Agricultural Hall of Islington, or also known as the Royal Agricultural Hall of Islington. Now, this is a pretty fancy venue. It was built in 1861 and was a really prominent venue for lots of shows, exhibitions and events and sort of everything happened there and it really did draw in the crowds and it was also a really beautiful looking place as well. It was like a mini Olympia but it was there first. At the time of it being built and for a few years after it was actually one of the biggest venues in the world which is quite impressive. It measured 117 metres by 66 metres. Now this was important, especially when it came to horse shows, because there was actually enough room for horses to really show off their paces or for the carriages to like pick up a little bit of speed. Um, so that was why it was a really great place to have horse shows. So from what I can gather, general horse shows were run there, but also breed societies ran shows there. For example, I know that the Hackney Horse Show ran there and the Shire Horse Show also ran there. The first horse show took place there in 1864, so not that long after it had opened. And it ran many successful events for years, but after the war, the building was abandoned and I guess kind of went a bit derelict. And actually it wasn't purchased until 1986, when it was then converted into what it is now, which is the Business Design Centre. And I think it's kind of sad. Yes, there's still little parts of its history there to this day, but it's really not the same building it used to be. And I think it's such a shame that it was converted the way it has been done because this was a beautiful building that held so many events, so much history to it. And it, it doesn't look the same now. <laughs> Sadly, it really doesn't. Fun fact, did you know the first ever Crufts took place at the Agriculture Hall in 1891? It was there for a good few years after before it then moved to a different venue. So the Agricultural Hall was a venue that hosted many, many different types of horse shows and a place that lots of breed societies used to host their events. Now, number two on my Lost London Horse Shows is Richmond Royal Horse Show. Now, this was a very fashionable, very glamorous horse show indeed that ran over three days and really drew in the crowds. I feel like out of all the shows I'm going to mention, this is the one that it's such a shame that we lost because from what I read online, from the little video clips that I've seen of it, it was a phenomenal show and everyone talks so highly of it. And it was a real shame that it was lost. So it was actually first put on in 1892 and it was actually by a local vet, I think. Um, and then it sadly had its last show run in 1967. There were different, you know, there were some years where it didn't take place and so on and obviously... There was war in between that, which obviously also meant it didn't run then, but it ran for a considerable time. I actually recently purchased a Richmond Royal Horse Show programme, and I didn't realise at the time, because I hadn't done any of this research, that it was actually the last show that ran that the programme was from, so I sort of feel like it's even more special now. So the show took place in the Deer Park, and fun fact, did you know that Richmond Park is the largest royal park in London? covering 25,000 acres. It's huge. I never, I never realised it was so big. I've never been before, but I never knew it was so huge. Want to know what's funny? The event supposedly was finished because there wasn't enough space. I mean, I think 25,000 acres should be enough for a horse show. Um, I'm just assuming that wherever they were allowed to host it, they weren't allowed any more space or so on. And the show was absolutely massive and the amount of classes they had was huge. So yeah. The reason it supposedly got cancelled was because there wasn't enough space. It really was a show that had it all. Literally, any show in class you can think of, they probably had it at the show. Whether it was like children's pony classes, whether it was hacks, show hunters, cobs, heavy horses, carriage driving, you name it, they had it going on there. Also, not forgetting every breed type you can possibly think of. You know, the Shetland, the Exmoor, the Dartmoor, there were Arabs. I mean, I, I, the list could go on. Very what I think would be similar to Windsor Horse Show now. I think they would have been very alike. As I've already mentioned, a very popular show for the royals to visit. And actually, if you Google Richmond Horse Show and our late Queen, there's some beautiful photos of her as a child there visiting and her father, the King, also there. They're really special photos. Out of all the shows I'm going to mention, I think this show really was spectacular and it seems such a shame that we've lost it. 
Now, another lost horse show is the Greater London Horse Show. Now, this took place on Clapham Common. It ran from 1945 to 1985, and this was a really popular place to see the top-end show jumpers of the world compete. So the show took place on the August bank holiday, and it really drew in the crowds. Once again, all these big horse shows that we've lost had huge amounts of crowds coming in to watch. And it wasn't just top end show jumping that took place. There were all types of showing classes going on from your hunters to your hacks to your children's show jumping and show ponies. You know, there was three days worth of it. Another lost horse show is one that was at Alexandra Palace, which I think must have been the most beautiful venue. Now, sadly, there are literally no details about the horse shows that took place there. The only reason I knew about it is because I saw an engraving that was dated 1867 of a horse show that was happening there. And I imagine a place like that would have had horse shows. Now, it's more famous for the race course that was there because it's a really peculiar shape. And the first meeting there took place in 18. 68. Um, so the horse show came a few, you know, 10 years after that. So I imagine there was probably quite a few horse shows there over the years, but just it's not online. <laughs> it's not on Google, it would seem. Um, but I just thought what an amazing venue that would have been. Now, I did say I was going to give some honourable mentions to some horse shows. I sadly just couldn't find any information on. But before we go to them, we obviously have to talk about White City Stadium because what a venue this was for a horse show. And actually, the Royal International Horse Show had a little brief period of time there. They were there from 1947 until the early 1950s. And then they came back for one more time in 1967. I actually have a programme from one of the horse shows there. And it's a beautiful programme. Um, but I mean, imagine competing in a stadium like that. I mean, just amazing. Just amazing. Again, during huge amounts of crowds. Um, we need a place like that again, don't we? So here are some of my honourable mentions for horse shows that people mentioned to me that sadly I could find very little on. Dagenham Town Show, Putney Horse Show, Harlow, Watford, Vauxhall, Hyde Park, Woolwich, and there were just so many. I can't tell you how many there were. There were just literally, as I said earlier, every borough of London had its own horse show. And sadly, they're all gone. They're all in the past and just very few remain now. Mainly the London horse show that we know about. I know I did read somewhere that they were trying to get back the Hyde Park horse show, but I don't think that happened. Um, and it just feels really sad that we've lost all those incredible events, but it's just the way it goes, doesn't it? Um, I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully it gives you a little taster of some of the horse shows that once took place in our capital city.